Greetings, Minecrafters! I am Nate T. Bird, and welcome back to my Jump Arena developer commentary. This is a series where I explain my thought process behind making the map Jump Arena. So, let's get started. In the last episode, I talked about the desert and some of the designs in it, and we also talked about the Cannon Craze bonus level. So if you did not see that, then make sure to go check that out. But in this episode, we are going to be talking about the forest. So the forest is by far the most different level that I made. Um, instead of having one path to go through, you have um, a few times where it branches off into two paths. It's still They still converge um, a little bit later on, just a few jumps later. So like right there, that's the place where the two paths converge. So I can go this way or that way, and the two paths both meet um, right there. But you do have to go on both paths because there are secrets on both paths. So right there, there was a secret, and then um, there's also secrets on the other paths further on in the level. Uh, I also kind of like this, um, it being different because Instead of me just being like, okay, I have to follow this one specific path jumping up here, I can actually, you know, jump over here, go up here, and instead of having to follow the one specific path, there are actually other options of paths that I can take. And so I, I like that um, part of it. <laughs> I keep on missing these jumps. Uh. And also, I introduced vines in this. The vines are like ladders, but you can't actually stand on them or um, do that much on them. You have to kind of just try your best to to maneuver on them, and they're kind of difficult. So right here, there's also another secret. Um, it is a little bit strange that the grass is what uh, makes it so that you miss a jump. Uh, it's it's so close to you that you feel like you can almost step on it, but you can't, and you sometimes, you know, just have to remind yourself of that. This is also the first time that I introduced this, uh, other than the tutorial, where you just, if you have enough speed, you can actually pass over a, a single block gap. It's kind of interesting. So you have to maneuver yourself, and the speed boost is actually sometimes too much that you actually go flying off the other side. Um, right here is another time where I want the player to try to think outside the box so they can actually jump up here, then use the vines to climb and get this secret. And then right here, this is the only path that you can take. There's not an alternate route. You have to come up here so that you can jump up here. I suppose perhaps there might be like a, uh, a glitched way where you could jump around there and then land over here somehow but for the most part it's it's not this way right here is an example of when the path splits into two one is harder but gives you more reward and the other is easier but gives you less reward so right here here's a four, four block jump which is harder and so you get a reward but then this other side is just a whole bunch of little jumps and so it's it's really easy and yeah but no reward so that's just a little bit of a design principle. I didn't really execute it that well, but it is still part of it. Right here's another example of this path splitting. You could go down there and jump across, or you could go up here. It's more difficult, but you can get um, more reward. <laughs> this secret is actually one that you can get without any upgrades. Um, you can do it just with the basic double jump, but most people have upgraded um, multi-jump by the time by the time that they actually get to this level. Right here is probably my favorite part of the level. It is sort of like a puzzle. You can't do it um, just by doing what you normally would right there on the edge where you pass where you change um, vines. It's it's difficult because you have a high possibility of falling off. It's like you have to be at the top and before you go over before, yeah, in order to not fall off. I don't know exactly how it works, but it, it does somehow. And 
I suppose if you shift, it makes it easier, but it doesn't because I just <laughs> I just failed right there. So this is a puzzle. You have to figure out how to do it. You have to use some skill, and then you get a reward for completing it. So I like that part of it. And also, there's not really much chance to fail. There's only two blocks that you could potentially fail on, but the checkpoint's just right there, so it's not like... It's not like it's difficult to get to. And right here there's a secret, the rainbow set firework. And then we are almost done with the level. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> so in order to get that, we need to go ahead and fall off and try again. Failed again. Looking down, guys, looking down. That's my advice to you. I don't need the coin. So we just unlocked the speedrun bonus arena. I did change the progression of the unlocks. So originally the speedrun bonus arena was the last thing that was unlocked. So it was the secret number 27. And what I found um, through testing is that a lot of people, they would complete all of these levels and then they would not they would not unlock any of these. And so they think that they're done. They're like, all right, I'm done. It was a cool map. Let's go do something else. And so what I did is I increased the rate and the um, speed at which you get the bonus arenas. So you get this one very, very quickly. You get it like, it's the fourth secret that you find. This one's like the seventh or sixth, and this one is the 16th. You know, it it's very, it's very rapid. It's a lot more um, speedy, and that's just to give players a consistent something new to do. And so now they can go and check out that bonus arena and have some fun. And also that's how you get coins really fast. Right here we have a stats sign. This is something that I think is cool because it just tells you all of your stats. It's not that important, I guess, but it still is kind of cool. And you also get an achievement uh, when you do it and a mask as well. So you can see that I've uh, traveled quite a few blocks, I've jumped a lot, I've played uh, for a long time, I've been in the air for a long time, and just all of this stuff is, is rather interesting. And then what I did is I took all of these scores, added them together, multiplied them by different amounts, and added them together so that I get the game score. So just a little bit of an interesting thing, and also to, to do these things, it's just a lot of scoreboards and stats and objectives and just different testing things, and I'll, I'll get to that in the potential last episode. So right here we have the e-puzzling mask. Hmm, interesting. And we also unlocked the confetti gun, which I think is cool. You just right-click. It's actually carried on a stick, but then it spawns confetti in your face. Yep, it's lots of fun. Um, the launchers. The launchers are also very cool. What it is, it's a retextured armor stand. And it has data for when you put it down. So it has it has uh, a name already attached to it. It has uh, an item already on its head. And so when I place it down, it um, it's an armor stand with a block model on its head. And then I just execute commands from that armor stand to summon fireworks, a random firework, every so often. So I just think that this is kind of a neat little addition something that I think players will enjoy and that I think they do enjoy just placing down a launcher and then it launches fireworks which is it's fairly neat I think it's neat I'm going to show you a secret right now so if you choose a colored swirl or the colored dust and we're just gonna unlock all of these things because we can and then you also choose the rainbow uh, option and when you return to the hub, you can buy this rainbow set. It lags the game out because it's giving you the, the head, and it gives you a cake mask. So kind of an interesting little secret. If you buy a rainbow set while having rainbow particles on, then you'll get a secret. <laughs> so right here, we got the achievement Rainbow Lover. If you use rainbow colored particles while well, you buy it, a set of rainbow fireworks. Rainbow fireworks are fun too. Yay! I think the big ball is my favorite. It's just like, it's this burst of, of colors. There's First there's the small, and then it just, it expands. It's hard to explain, but it's cool. I like it. 
Now let's go ahead and do the speedrun. So the idea behind the speedrun is A, to collect coins and just to be fun, and B, to run around really fast. You're just trying to run around. It's like you have a race course almost. So this over here would be the finish line and the starting line. You can go over here. You can jump up here. You can go over here. There's a few different paths or secrets or shortcuts or whatever you want to think of them as. And it's just you're running really fast and collecting coins. Now I'm, I'm missing a lot of these jump timings, but that's okay. It's just a bonus level. It's just supposed to be fun. I think it's, it's a little bit of an interesting uh, take on a bonus level because, well, there's no... It's not much parkour actually involved in it. It's more or less just running. And I guess there is some parkour because you have to time your jump. But other than that, it's running. Running, not parkour. But I thought players would enjoy um, running around, having some fun, collecting coins. And these right here are mushrooms. I've remodeled them. Or not remodeled, just retextured them, actually. They be the same texture as this, except for with... Um, in a spike format. So it's like they're little stalagmites. Kind of interesting. Right there I just got my time-based achievement. So if I've been playing the map for one hour, I get this achievement. And hmm, what else what else is there to talk about? That's what I'm confused about. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to decide what I should talk about, but I just don't know. If you guys have any questions about this map, or about map making, then please feel free to ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. I could talk about this texture right here. I did re retexture this. This is what I think of, I guess, when I see prismarine, um, the prismarine bricks, is I think of scales. So I think of like fish, basically, which is which is good, but I just feel like the, uh, the default vanilla scales, um, prismarine bricks, they don't look that scaly and so I just I tried to make it look the same as that other one color wise so the colors should be the same but then I just tried to uh, sharpen the actual scale look so I think I did an okay job it's not perfect but it's okay <laughs> it's okay for this map so that does it for this episode I don't really have anything else to talk about other than there's uh, more secrets that we didn't find, but that's, you know, there's secrets for a reason, and if you play the map, um, you can find them, and it can be more of a surprise for you, so I don't want to spoil all of the secrets. Uh, I will warn you, though, however, that some of the secrets do require a little bit of skill, um, and then most of them require the upgrades. So get the upgrades, find the secrets, and watch as the... The hub evolves and you you can find and you can use all sorts of different things all sorts of different particles and different just different things so in the next episode i will be talking about the uh, mechanics behind the map so I'll, I'll go and show you a little bit more behind the scenes this episode is just more me me talking about my thoughts so thank you very much for watching and have a fantastic day